Susan, if I could get you to grab an end of this container, we can just lift it right up. This will probably uh, work as a pretty good wastebasket, too. Find the large box that sits on top of the weigh tubes. This box has all the main parts required for assembling the Mark V. The most important, of course, is the owner's manual here. Before proceeding any further, locate this manual and spend some time going through it. This will be your guide to all the detailed areas of your Mark V, like assembly, alignment, maintenance, even troubleshooting. And be sure to refer to it often whenever you're not certain about something. I'll get the main table out, Mike, if you will grab the leg stands. The table height crank handle is reversed at the factory for packaging purposes, so I'll just put it back to its normal position. Don't tighten it, though, until the main table is in position. Slide the headstock to the middle and lock. Susan, while you've been working on that main table and crank handle, I found the extension table and legs in the parts box, and I've hand-tightened the bolts. We'll align and tighten the entire extension table a little bit later. For now, I'll just drop this right in the accessory mount side of the Mark V, and we'll probably need to align this roughly to the main table. Once we've done this, I think we're about ready to roll the Mark V over. It's also probably a good idea to use some cardboard from the shipping container on the floor to protect the table surfaces. Easy does it. Also, make sure you have everything locked down before you move it. Good idea, Susan. Easy does it. How's that look? Now, with the Mark V upside down, we're ready to attach the leg panels. There is no left or right panel. Just each size uses five carriage bolts, five lock washers, and five nuts. By the way, do you have that hardware, Susan? Yes, I do. I found it in the box. Hand me some more hardware there, Susan. Beautiful. This is the wrong thing. If you ordered the optional starter accessory kit, this is the time to add the casters. Okay. Let's plug it in and check the powertrain and speed dial. Only turn the speed dial on when the Mark V is running. Otherwise, you could damage the speed changing mechanism. Looks like everything's running smoothly. What's Sounds next? Good. Well, if you haven't already attached the fill handle, that's this right here, then go ahead and do that right now. It's in the parts box. Then what we'll do is check the actual quill movement. Now, there shouldn't be any stickiness. It shouldn't bind. And there shouldn't be any unusual noises and vibrations. This one's great. Now ready to begin aligning the Mark V. But during the break, Susan and I have rotated the Mark V around so that the front side is facing us. This makes the alignment procedures much easier. Of course, it's always a good idea to have good, accurate alignment tools, beginning with a, an alignment square, a combination square. To check to see that yours is true and accurate, here's a fun and simple little test that you might try. Make sure you select a piece of lumber that has at least one true and straight edge. Place the square across the face of the board and draw a line. Then what you'll do is flop the square over and draw one more line. If the two lines appear to be parallel, you've got a true and accurate square. This one looks good. Susan will also use the sanding disc as an alignment tool. It will represent the main spindle's plane of rotation. You must first, however, locate the disc's high spot and then make sure to avoid this spot when performing the alignment procedures. To do this, you mount the disc on the spindle then bring the main table up about one inch to the disc. Susan will adjust the table height so half of the disc is above the table. Then we're going to go ahead and place a 5 30 seconds Allen wrench on the table so that the long end contacts the outside of that disc. After just a couple of turns, just like that, the wrench will position itself to touch the high spot only. Go ahead and mark that spot with a piece of chalk, Susan. Then mark a line all the way through the center. We're just about ready here. Should I use this wood? That might work real well. All right. Great. We will now try and avoid this high spot whenever possible. 
Now we're ready for our first check, which is the headrest lock. If there's any movement of the upper way tubes, lift the handle and turn the shaft clockwise. How's that look, Susan? Good. Always, of course, double check. The carriage lock also needs to be adjusted at this time. If it moves when the, it is in a lock position or if it doesn't firmly snap into place, it will need adjusting. Use a half-inch socket wrench to tighten or loosen the nut here at the back of the carriage. The first one is to, is to check the 90-degree left stop. So Susan will take the disc sander off and we'll replace that with a drill chuck with a bit in place. Get Allen wrench. Got it now. After the drill chuck is in position, we'll lower the table to 90 degrees. And Susan, if I can have you check to see that the headstock's locked, the carriage locked, we'll go ahead and move the Mark V into drill press position. With the Mark V in drill press position, it's an easy check using our combination square to see if the edge of the combination square runs the entire length of the drill bit. If it does not, an adjustment on the stops need to be made. To find the stops, Susan, I'll have you tilt the table. And they can be found on each side here and here. Make your adjustments, and then, of course, always double check. The 45 degree stop is just as easy. Mike will mount the sanding disc and position the marked line horizontally. Loosen the table tilt lock and swing the table to the right until it stops. How's that look? Looks good. Check the angle with the combination square. If it needs adjustment, use the adjustable wrench again and turn the stop bolts until they contact the underside of the table. This one looks a little off, Susan. You got a wrench right there? Here's the adjustable wrench. And there's our stops. How's it look? Much better. Well, while you're down there, Mike, why don't you go ahead and check the zero stop? By depressing the table stop pin, which is right here, with the combination square placed like this, it's easy to see if the table is perpendicular to the disc. How does that look, Mike? Well, it's close, but I think we can get a little bit closer, Susan. Loosen the table tilt lock and set the table exactly at 90 degrees. Now lock it down carefully, Mike, so it doesn't move and then adjust the stop pin by depressing it and adjusting the stop bolt until it makes contact with the pin. I'll and use this adjustable wrench to do that. I got it. Now how does it look? Let me make one last check. Right on. Looks Great. good. Now with the 90, 45, and zero degree adjustments made, we can check to see that the table tilt indicator is reading accurately. This one, it looks like is a little bit off, Susan. Here's a Phillips screwdriver you'll need to make that adjustment. About got it? Yeah, it looks pretty good. How's it look? Great. Tighten her down. That has it. Congratulations, you've now completed the hardest part of the Mark V alignment.